Hi guys, thanks for watching this video. I'm Tane from Bjor, Build Your Own Robot. And today I'm going to show you how you can build your own startup robot using Bjor. Okay, first off, I'm going to explain to you how these electronics exactly work. Uh, in the second phase, you're going to really build a robot with it. And at the end of the video, if you paid attention, you're going to be a Bjor Pro. No need for the manual today, guys, because you're watching this video. The thing you certainly are going to need is the motherboard, the brain of your robot. It has two sides on it, the blue side and the green side. What we're also going to need is a minimum of one blue part and one green part. The blue parts are all going to sense something, these are the sensors. And the green parts are going to do something, these are the actuators. All parts are going to be connected using jack cables, these are round connectors. You might know them from your smartphone or your tablet devices. Make sure that they're connected on the opposite side of each other so the brain knows which components should work together. At this moment the brain does nothing at all because it needs power. So we're going to attach the power bank using the power cable to fire up the brain. An LED on the brain will light up showing it's got power and it's going to work. In this case we've attached a turning knob on the opposite side of a servo motor, which means if I turn the knob, the servo motor will turn as well. And the fun part about this electronics kit is that you can interchange blue parts and you can interchange green parts. Right now I'm going to change the blue part from a turning knob to a distance sensor and you will see that the servo motor will now respond to distance. It's that simple. On the other part of the board the same thing goes. So I can interchange this green part, the servo motor, for an LED. In this case you will see that the LED will shine brighter according to the distance measured by the distance sensor. You can attach several inputs and output parts on the board at the same time, which means you can have different functionalities in just one creation. In this case I will attach the distance sensor again and I will attach a stepper motor. The stepper motor goes all the way around and it goes faster and slower according to the input it gets from the blue part which is attached on the opposite side of the board. There are four blue parts and four green parts in total. There's the distance sensor which detects distance, there's a sound sensor which detects sounds, there's the turning knob which you can just turn yourself to set the signal and there's a light sensor which detects light. On the other side we have the servo motor which goes back and forth according to the signal. We've got the stepper motor which goes faster and slower but all the way around according to the signal. Then there's the LED which adjusts its brightness to the signal it receives from the brain. And then there's the buzzer which makes noise. But the electronics alone of course is not a robot yet so we're gonna use cardboard in this case to build a robot with these electronics. Next to the cardboard you're gonna need some tape. It's always handy to have scissors. You're gonna use a marker and this handy little device, a puncture pen. So this is a robot we're going to build today. Uh, as you can see its head turns and it's actually able to give you a box to uh, say hi. You can just turn the knob and make the speed change. You can make any robot you want. We like this one so we're gonna make it something like this. But you can make any robot that you want using this kit. We're gonna turn this little box into his head. So we're just gonna close up the bottom side. If you have three hands, it's gonna be easy to do. If you have two hands, it's also very doable. So don't be afraid if you only have two hands. That's perfect. All right, it looks like a head already. What we're gonna do now is we wanna make the head turn. So we're gonna take off the click on part from the stepper motor. Because the stepper motor turns all the way around. We're going to use the puncture pen to actually make holes in the cardboard through the holes that are already in the click-on part. We're going to use split pens to secure this part to the bottom part of the head.
Next we're gonna make the arm and I'm using a template which is kind of boring. You can make your own arm with a very different shape. It's all good. I'm just gonna draw over this uh, template that we have and then I'm just gonna cut it out using the scissors. I want to make this arm move back and forth so I'm gonna use the servo motor for that. I'm gonna attach this arm to the servo motor using the puncture pen and the split pens again. I'm gonna use the puncture pen to make holes in the cardboard at the right place and then I'm gonna use the split pens. I'm just gonna push them through the holes that I made, fold them open Next I'm going to make the body of the robot. So I'm just going to use a big box and fold it in. I use some tape to tape it shut and there's your body. Next we need to attach the stepper motor to the body. So I'm going to make a hole on the top part of the body exactly the size of the motor that sticks out from the stepper motor board. This way the stepper motor will fall into this hole and then we can attach the board using the puncture pen and the split pens again. Once the motor is secure in the body, I can reattach the click on part with the head on it. Then our robot is actually starting to look like a robot a little bit. The next step is to secure the turning knob on the body on the side. I'm going to use the puncture pen and the split pens again. Next we're going to use the jack cables to connect the parts to the brain, as you saw earlier in this video. And there we go, the first functionality of your robot is already working. Super! Next we're going to attach the arm. First we're going to mark where the motor sticks out of the board. We're going to make a hole exactly the same size. Let the motor fall into that hole and then we're going to use the puncture pen and the split pens again to secure the motor. Next I'm going to secure the distance sensor to the front of the body. Again this is done with the puncture pen and the split pens. Then I'm going to connect all the components to the motherboard. In this case it's really handy to make a hole in the front of the robot. This way the cables can go through that hole and easily reach the easy board. And there we go, the second functionality of your robot is also done. Great! Next we're going to decorate the robot. The key here is to first use a pencil because if you don't and you just use the marker right away, well I did that and let's say the results are visible. Once the robot is fully functional and decorated the way you like, you're done building this robot. You can be very proud of yourself. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I hope you're a pro builder now with the Bjor kit. Uh, and if you like this video and you want to see more creations being built with Bjor, there's a lot of videos coming up. So, check it out.